Hey, Warpugs. So, I was checking around the Discord, and I saw a request from The Rain, and this is Leadheads, just how bad is the Combine? Now, frankly, my knowledge of anything revolving around Half-Life is in between nothing and less than nothing. So, what I thought was... Um, I'd bring in somebody that knew about Half-Life, and then I wouldn't appear so absolutely gobsmacking stupid when I'm sitting here checking this out, and they could bring me some more supplemental info. And I looked far and wide across all the hillsides and the country, and then I went into the stars, and then the rain poked me on the shoulder and was like, Hey, you idiot, I requested this, and the rain's here. Hey, rain. Hello, uh, my name is The Rain. I've been a fan of Half-Life since I was little. I started with the second game and I've been playing all of the games, except for Half-Life Alex because I don't have a VR, VR set. Oh, okay. Well, my knowledge of Half-Life is basically it exists and I know what I've seen from Brew Alpha Busa, but I never played Half-Life. It was one of those games that I just never got a chance to go into. So it's going to be kind of interesting uh, hearing about things and just getting a little bit of a lore deep dive. So we have the uh, creator of this is Leadhead, and she's going to be explaining just how screwed up the Combine is. So, you ready, Ray? Yes, All right, let's I get, am. Let's get into it. That's a dick move! Rarely in my entire life have I ever seen humanity depicted in a worse situation than it's in in Half-Life 2. Let me turn this up a little bit. That might seem ridiculous to say. Half-Life 2 isn't all that gritty a game, but hear me out. Because while we only see a small fraction of this world over our time with Gordon, like everything in Half-Life, the implications behind the things we see tell us so many things about the Combine. Let's okay. start at the beginning. No matter how many times I've been relocated, I never get used to it. No matter how many times I get relocated, I never get used to it. There are a wealth of details in this first chapter, point insertion, but let's start with this. Relocation. All we know so far is that this guy is getting relocated over and over again. As we move through the first chapter, we see- It's always a good sign whenever there's pictures on the wall of somebody who is also speaking to you by a screen. That's always a good indicator of how bad your life is. Extremely. See that this is happening to everyone. They're always departing, but they never arrive. And the ones that do arrive, they, they, they never leave. You never see them go. They're always full. No one ever gets on, but they're always, they're always departing, but they never arrive. Every single person in this world is being moved from city to city over and over again. Some philosopher somewhere in history probably gave this a name, but let's call it civil confusion. True. Like that guy on the train said, he never gets used to it. This is one of the Combine's many ways of keeping people complacent and stopping them from formulating a plan or even thinking about formulating a plan. What is the Combine? The Combine are an alien race that uh, controls, like, dimensions and stuff. All right. Uh, they, they're basically uh, interdimensional empire. Oh, well, lovely. Well, if you wanted to keep people from rising up, this would be the perfect way to do it. Mass relocations would be the absolute best way to do it because then you have to... You never are in one place long enough to actually form a social network. Uh, one of the reasons... Uh, one of the reasons uh, why the Combine are one of my favorite villains is because of how it will be later in the video, but how cold they are. They're very very cold. Well, they're very, very pragmatic, too. As soon as yes. the Combine had established power, it did the number one thing it needed to do to stop people from resisting. They broke up the families and the friend groups. Every single person we see here is living amongst a bunch of total strangers, and if it weren't for Gordon, they'd be surrounded by a totally new group of strangers by this time next month, just as they were last month, just in case any of them made any friends with which to scheme. This is my third transfer this year. Just for a second, imagine what this must be like for these citizens. We don't spend enough time with any of them to really hear how hard it's been on them, but if you've ever moved to a new area away from your friends, or suddenly been put in a new school full of strangers, well, that feeling is their entire life, only they don't know if their families are alive. 
All they know is that even if the Combine were to miraculously fall, they'll probably never see them again. That's Jack. These citizens, they'll never be able to settle down no matter what happens. That right there is how you control a population so that they die quietly. The Combine though, they sure don't stop there. I mean, listen to what this woman says. Are you the only ones on that train? On your way to parts unknown. Welcome. Overwatch stopped our train in the woods and took my husband for questioning. They said he'd be on the next train. I'm not sure when that was. D Your husband's dead. He dead. They're, they're being nice, though, letting me wait for him. This woman's significant other, through a mistaken bureaucracy, ended up on the same train as her, and so the Combine stopped the train and took him away, probably to be executed. Yeah. Now that he's been reminded of what he has to fight for, and odds are very good that the same will happen to her once they get around to it. This is a seriously bad situation. So how else do you promote civil confusion? Well, as we see here, the Combine take the personal effects of everybody every time they're moved. We see abandoned luggage all over the place at this train station. I see, they took your suitcase too. Huh. They can't get away with this much longer. I mean, hell, when we get into the back room behind Barney's interrogation chamber, we see a huge pile of confiscated luggage to no doubt be incinerated as soon as they get around to it. Us. You have absolutely no- Yeah. About that beer I owe ya. What's up? About that beer I owe Shut ya. up! Shut the <laughs> fuck up! Oh my god. Why? What did I do to you? Nothing beyond what the Combine gives you. No family, no friends, no clothes, no medicine, no personal mementos, nothing. You couldn't carry a drawing that your deceased child drew you without it being ripped out of your hands and torn apart as soon as a CP unit decides to search you. Dude. Oh, and your child is deceased. The Combine set up a suppression field that stops embryonic development, not just in the cities, but everywhere on Earth. We even hear the ghostly echoes of children's laughter if we get close enough to this playground. Uh, this, uh, but this is one of the reasons why I love the atmosphere of Half Life, Dude. because it's it's not like the grim darkness of the Imperium in 40k, where it's very screwed up, but humanity still exists. But here is the grim darkness of extinction. Yeah, this. There is, is no future. There is no future. Right. This there is, is over. On. Yeah. This is over. This is done. You see, I've always been very, 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 very critical of um, any kind of movie regarding alien invasion because I'm just like, look, if a species came in from an extra, uh, extra galactic species came in to our little neck of the woods here in the solar system, um, we would be so far past screwed. It would be yeah. unimaginable. If they were hostile, we would not stand... A kerosene cat and chance in hell with gasoline pants on. It would be over. Uh, how long do you think the combine needed to control the entirety of oh, Earth? Oh, days, days. It took seven hours. Yeah, like it, it. It would not take that long. And people get it twisted in their heads all the time. I've been thinking about this stuff since people since. Like for a, for an extremely long time, if a if a species could travel faster than light arrived here, just the sheer fact that they've managed the engineering and scientific feats to travel faster than light, the second they show up, we're done. It doesn't matter what we do. Like I it, do believe we have a fighting chance, but it won't be like for long. Like no. or bombs, maybe we'll still damage them, but. They can still come and come and come and well, that's it's the, over, anyways. Well, that's the, that's the thing. That that's that's really that's really what about the thing here, okay? We sit there and like, oh, the atomic bomb, the atomic bomb, the atomic bomb, blah, you know, all this other kind of stuff. If they can resist the atomic bomb, we're done. The atomic bomb might be a stick to them. It it might be yeah. absolutely nothing to them. This is just screwed up. Humanity will, as it, it is, is when we start Half-Life 2, never have another generation. The entire species is on death's door. Well, if humanity is angry enough, people will plan some sort of rebellion, regardless of how little time you give them to get acquainted with their surroundings. Word will get out, and people will start to plan something, regardless of what you do. Mm -hmm. So, how do we further this control? Well, ruthless genocide. 
Remember how this apartment is raided and everybody in it is killed no more than a minute after Gordon steps foot in it? Well, the Combine have some sort of AI that oversees humanity called Overwatch. And, well, listen to what it says here before the CPs start shooting. What it's saying here essentially translates to, we have detected one more person in your building than we expected. We'll give you a decent day's meal if you lay down on the ground and confirm your identity with civil protection as soon as they've given the all clear. Oh my god. But, well, that isn't what happens. Everybody's killed immediately, and granted, they didn't comply with what the CP said, but as these two citizens outside of the building said, They have no reason to come to our place. Don't worry, they'll find one. These yeah. CPs aren't here to neutralize one rogue citizen. They're here to kill everybody now that their civil status has been infected by a seditious individual. Now, are those humans in those suits? Yes, those are normal humans. Uh, they're not modified, they're not anything, they're just people. Why are they helping them? Uh, because they're like, there is some more rations. More food Dude. in the plate. Yeah. Why do you think they scream, run for your life, as soon as they hear the Overwatch voice? I mean, even before this miscount is detected, we see the CPs raiding an apartment and killing everybody, all because they didn't answer the door quickly enough. So basically, what this all boils down to is, the moment we notice you, you and everyone you've ever talked to is dead, no questions asked. Huh. Good luck inspiring the people around you to resist under those conditions. What are we going to do? Die! That, this guy's line? Don't drink the water. They put something in it to, to make you forget. I don't even remember how I got here. Implies that at least some of the citizens we see are being drugged up 24 hours a day. They don't even remember that they had a life before the Combine. Honestly, the most unrealistic thing about Half-Life 2 is that anybody managed to escape this system before Gordon. While the Overwatch soldiers we start fighting after we return from Ravenholm are all augmented and have no free will, these CPs who are killing all of these civilians are all human, hence Barney is able to be undercover and isn't brainwashed. So- Oh god! It's him! <laughs> it's him! You're the reason that this is happening to me, you bastard! I love that beat out of you. God, stop. How the hell does it motivate these CPs <laughs> to go against their own species? Well, like I said, in this system, you have absolutely nothing except for what the Combine gives you. That makes it pretty easy to motivate people to do what you want. So, what does it give the CPs? Well, first off, right in the beginning of the game, we hear a citizen at a food line say this. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to join civil protection just to get a decent meal. Huh. We don't know everything about CP coercion, but we've got a couple of other things that we do know. I'm sure a lot of you have heard this line before. I've heard a lot of people say that this is the Combine stimulating the pleasure centers of a CP's brain to create the sensation of sex. The incel revolt happened! It happened! It it gets worse. It gets worse. They didn't become wizards. They became puppets of an intergalactic alien species. Yes. <laughs> but I offer a different explanation. So, first off, the suppression field. Basically, it stops embryonic development in all citizens and makes reproduction impossible. We've already touched on the implications of that, but to me, this means that the Combine would classify sex with a condom or birth control as a non-mechanical reproduction simulation. It's a simulation of reproduction, but without the mechanical element of a sperm cell entering an egg. Alright, so if you do well as a CP, the Combine will let you get your rocks off. What's so bad about that? Well, here, let's just let the CP kill us real quick. Family Cohesion Preserved. Well, damn, that has some messed up implications. So what you're telling me is that there is a way to see your family in this world. You just have to join the CPs and help them stamp out the last slivers of human ambition. And, well, if you fail in the line of duty, then your family is executed. And before you say that this Family Cohesion Preserved line only means that the CP gets to continue seeing their family, let's look at another line real quick. When a protection team member dies, you'll sometimes hear their squad mates say this. Engaging protection team is 
non-cohesive. So cohesion just means that everybody involved in the team is alive. <coughs> Long story short, every CP that Gordon killed or evaded had their families executed if they had them. Oh my god. The thing you see is a stalker. And it's like a servitor. This is screwed. Damn the combat. Yes. And wrapping around to that non-mechanical reproduction simulation thing, I guess this all boils down to one thing. Uh, if uh, a CP uh, wait, is in combat please, with please, a please, please. What's up? Also, if I remember correctly, the stalkers are full are fully aware of their situation. Oh my god. This is This is screwed. It is. That was that's why I like it so much. Dude, this is messed up. No one like no wonder people were such fans of this game. Oh my god, that's this is horrific. Uh, let let's keep on let's keep on rolling. High value. She's doing a good job of detailing all this stuff out to us. I mean, she's yes. doing a good job of this. A target like Gordon, they could either succeed and get to have sex with their spouse, and more importantly, see their spouse, or fail and have their family executed, probably along with themselves. Well, what about the bachelors, like Barney probably is? How do we stop more of them from revolting? Easy. Malnourishment. Take a listen to this line that plays when a CP is preparing for combat. Okay, so it gives them drugs to get them fast and alert before Great. combat. Makes sense, but this is the combine you're talking about. It's got your life functions monitored. It knows exactly how much energy you need at any given time. It wouldn't surprise me at all if most of these CPs we see in non-confrontational situations like this one were just barely conscious, given just the amount of chemical stimulation they need to continue to shout at civilians and chase them a short distance if anything goes wrong. <laughs> Remember, all that Barney did before the uprising was open a door for you and walk to Kleiner's lab. Meanwhile, when this CP is performing the loyalty check on you, his suit probably gave him a slight stim boost from the Overwatch AI just moments before. So basically, you might join the CPs for a promise of a decent meal every now and then, but once you do, the Combine start holding a gun to your family's head. You stay only slightly less malnourished than you were before, and all you have to do to get this upgrade in life is be ready to kill or injure members of your own endangered species at a moment's notice. These guys are so Dude. incredibly evil. So that's all how the Combine maintains a nice stockpile of humans to use for whatever purpose, but let's talk about what comes once the humans are dead, the transhumans, and all the other abominable chimera that the Combine manufacture. See, yeah, you boss. might occasionally hear over yeah, uh, remember when you watched the the very cool animation about yeah. Half Life? Yeah. The the soldier is one of those. You see them in the video right there. Oh, dude, no. Overwatch reminding CPs that they can get a promotion if they opt for memory replacement. Well, that's the first step to becoming an Overwatch soldier. Now, as far as I can tell, these guys aren't a hive mind. They've just had their minds scrubbed of every emotion, memory, and skill that isn't useful in combat. They're hyper-organized. I mean, just look at some of these maneuvers they use. Two of them fire while the other one reloads, they flush you out of cover with grenades or a flank route, they advance on you when you're wounded, shotgunners don't use all of their ammo in one bout unless they have to, snipers will destroy your cover and use ambient explosives against you. Now, combine soldiers don't have great accuracy, and Gordon is a bit of a bullet sponge when he's got a decent charge on his suit, even on hard mode. Those two things combined can definitely make these guys seem kinda dumb. But this AI is actually pretty damn impressive. Uh -huh. There are some pathfinding issues which cause them to get to where they're going a bit slowly, plus you're shooting at each other, which kind of distracts you from the intricacies. But these guys are genuinely super well coordinated. Take a look at how well they capitalize on their advantage here and almost get killed. Oh, okay. This is actually really good AI. When yeah, was this made? Um, uh, 2004, if I remember correctly. This is really good AI for this time. Yeah. This is really good tactics. Even in the 
even the first game, yeah. he had really good eye. Like, even the cockroaches in the first game had very good eye. That's, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, the reason That's the really so good. this is to emphasize just how non-human these guys are. The way they audibly count down the timer on their grenades. The way they coordinate so cleanly with so little audible speech. The way that they describe killing a man as amputating them from the populace. Amputate, malignant, coagulate, infection, diagnose, dissect, sociocidal. All of this medical language. This is where we get to the most sinister aspect of the Combine. It views all of humanity as a single organism, a single body. It describes dissident citizens as malignant, and when sentencing one, it orders its troops to diagnose, amputate, and coagulate. You might have noticed that I've been referring to the Combine as the singular it over the course of this video, rather than the plural they. Well, this is why. It's why it's called the Combine. It combines everything it touches into one being, a being which is- What in the hell is that? I said the stalker. Dude. Simply called the Combine. As a human under the Combine's rule, you're little more than a white blood cell, and if you act with any more free will than a white blood cell, you're infected. You're committing sociocidal acts, and you need to be amputated. This is why it always hits me so hard when I hear the Overwatch address Freeman as individual. He's one of, if not the only human on Earth who isn't a citizen of the Combine. He's the only one who is, in the Combine's eye, an individual being, like itself. This whole story is, in the Combine's eye, two beings going against each other. It's Gordon, and it's the Combine. Gordon is this foreign, cancerous cell that somehow worked its way into the Combine's bloodstream, and is spreading its malignance throughout the entire body, until eventually, the whole of Earth is as good as destroyed in the Combine's eye. What in the hell is that? Um, well, in my language, it's a mosquito. Mosquito? Yeah. Did they, mean, get them from, did they get them from Florida? Um, <laughs> almost all of the life forms of the Combine uh -huh. have a mechanical part in them. Oh. All of them. Oh, They're so. probably from another planet. You probably. Right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> That's where we get to the parasitic nature of the planet. Combine. That's where we get to this absolutely beautiful visual metaphor that's at play throughout the entirety of Half-Life 2. Look at how the Combine has sort of integrated itself into human society and architecture. Every human has some sort of ID chip in their hand. Combine structures have sort of forced their way into human architecture all over the place. Restrictors burrow into the sand, smart walls shake the earth beneath them, preventing an antlion infestation, and of course, the Combine's biggest tumor of all, the Citadel. This gigantic blemish on the surface of the Earth, metaphorically draining her resources through these long tendrils that spread across the city. Again, metaphorically speaking, these tendrils might as well be the ones that have drained so much of Earth's oceans. Speaking of, the canals in City 17 are where this visual metaphor is at its best in my eye. Take a look at what this is. These canals symbolize how humans once worked their way into Earth's ecosystem and integrated themselves into it. Only now, the Combine is here. The waters have been polluted and drained. Dead, useless ships are all stranded in the newly drained canal, left to rot. And all that's left is the dried up husk of what was once a healthy body, a healthy planet, a healthy population, and a few combined tumors dotted around the place, draining what little life this dead, empty husk of a once biologically rich planet has to offer them. That's what's so dark about the Combine. It doesn't just replace Earth's infrastructure with its own, it uses every last bit of it that is useful, and it leaves the rest to die and rot. The Combine is a parasite, so- Yeah? This is one of the reasons why I like retail more than the idea of the Vita. Because how like you Vita uh -huh. was very dark, but very in your face. Oh. Very 1984, basically. Yeah, that's what like, that's what this reminds me of. It's 1984, but instead of Big Brother, we have the A's. Yeah, and this is one of the reasons why I like Riddle more. It's more subtle. It's more 
you have to observe to really get in how bad humanity is in this world. Well, humanity's not bad. They're absolutely screwed. They're terminally screwed at this point. Yeah. There's no coming back from this. Like, And even if there is, it probably will need decades. Maybe centuries. even centuries. Centuries yeah. to recover from something like this. And even then, you're not going to fully recover. Sucking on the corpse of a once beautiful planet, which was destroyed as a... Like, just based off what I'm seeing right here, they've taken a lot of the water. And... With that much water being gone, the ecology of the planet is wrecked. It's absolutely wrecked. Like, you're talking massive climate change on a level that's just... It, 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 oh, God. Multiply it I remember spread itself across. Yeah? When I, I played when I was little, and I went to one of the missions, which was in the road, like... In real life, it would be like you look to the to the side to the ocean, and the ocean will be there. But when I look, there's a giant cliff, and there there's the ocean. So the continental shelf is exposed. That's how much. No. Oh. No, but oh. the ocean is still there, but it's very drained. Oh, okay. It's clearly drained. Yeah, so shallow life ecology is done at the very least. Oh my God, that okay. this would be. This is just nightmarish. Across the entrails of an ecosystem. On the smallest, most insignificant level, to the scale of the entire planet, the Combine has parasitized every last thing on this planet that could ever be considered that, alive. That, in that mission. There? You can see clearly how much of the ocean is drained. So about... Looks to be about maybe... 50 feet of ocean. The continental shelf is only about 400 feet underwater. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> no. Combined it into one. So answer me this. Are you going to pick up that can? Some have lately called me a collaborator as if yes. such a term were shameful. Yes. I ask you what greater endeavor exists than that of collaboration. In our current unparalleled enterprise, refusal to collaborate is simply a refusal to grow, an insistence on suicide, if you will. Did the lungfish refuse to breathe air? Yeah, the oh. speech right there is basically a speech of how we must accept the combine and all that. How about hell to the no? He sold us. Like... I haven't said this about somebody in a video game from this type, this era, but he has a very punchable face. She does. It crept forth boldly while its brethren remained in the blackest ocean abyss, with lidless eyes forever staring at the dark, ignorant and doomed despite their eternal vigilance. Would we model ourselves on the trilobite? Are all the accomplishments of humanity fated to be nothing more than a layer of broken plastic shards thinly strewn across a fossil bed, sandwiched between the Burgess Shale and an eon's worth of mud? In order to be true to our nature and our destiny, we must aspire to greater things. We have outgrown our cradle. It is futile to cry for mother's milk when our true sustenance awaits us. I, I thought that the thumbnail was a prison cell, but now I Before see I head place. out and get to playing LSD Dream Emulator, I'd just like to go ahead and verbally thank my patrons, especially those donating $10 or more monthly, such as Alex Vanderwood. Almost. Dude. I did not anticipate this. I. I always knew the Half, uh, Half Life series was. Oh my god. Especially. Yeah, I always knew it was special because so many people talked about it. Yeah. But man, I'm this still, is brutal. I'm still waiting for the half life three. <laughs> I still believe. I still believe. <laughs> this was absolutely brutal. Um Oh my goodness, this was absolutely brutal. So this was done by Leadhead, and she apparently is 
this this was very extremely well put together. Um, yeah, she's very analytical of videos, and she even made a video of about um, Postal Two. Why, even though she like analyzes games and all of that, she basically made an exception with Postal Two to just shut your brain off <laughs> and just do the worst. Mm -hmm. This, this in and of itself is probably the one of the more dark settings that I've seen. Um, just flat out, just the absolute darkness of this setting. Um, there is still a positive uh, message about humanity, about how we can still adapt. Right. And I like that message too, because through your ingenuity, you can basically greg the combine wait a minute so this in this game you can have multiple endings no you have one ending okay one ending okay but you play as gordon freeman so you basically greg them oh man i got something in my eye just now and it's driving me crazy this is this was very well put together I love this. This is the kind of thing that I need to kind of understand Half-Life a little bit more. To understand, like, the lore behind it. Um, what all's involved in it. And everything like that. Rain, I appreciate you joining me for this one. I really do. Thank you, boss. Um, so. This. I finally understand. Like, this is one of the most, this is one of the most evil societies I have seen in fiction. The Jakari are still worse. The Jakari are still worse. Because they want they do you, it for the lulls. Yeah, they do it for they do it for the lulls half the time. It's like, we could just do this. But let's make a lampshade out of them. For no reason. Why? <sighs> War Pugs, I'm gonna head out from here. Um I do believe that. Um, I'm closing in on the end of a couple of series that I'm checking out. The Siege of Rax being one of them. Once I finish with the Siege of Rax, I'm going to immediately start going back into Hell of a Boss. Because I've had people asking me when I'm going to start that back up. The reason I stopped checking those out is because, quite quite literally, I run out of time in a day. That's just that's just the nature of the beast, guys. I'm trying to, still trying to get adjusted to my schedule two months into this new schedule. So it's it's been kind of a struggle. But... I'm, I'm trying, guys. I'm trying. Just throw a brick at me. I'll be fine. Until next time, though, check the links in the description below for Leadhead's, uh, all of Leadhead's links. Subscribe to them if you're a fan of Half-Life because I'm telling you what, uh, she did an amazing job on this. And I want to see more. I really want to see if more. You want, if you want a very in-depth uh, analysis of I want to see how this happened. In general, I want to yeah. see how this happened. You, yeah. If you want a very in-depth analysis of video games, mm -hmm. subscribe to Deadhead. She's very good. Yeah. Um, all those links are going to be in the description down below, right next to my own, everybody. Including the Patreon, uh, Discord, everything like that. If you guys want to come in and throw uh, another request into the request tab, there's only 300 of them. <laughs> Do not say the line. Don't say it. Don't, don't. I know, I already know the comment section is going to be flooded with it. Well, Warpugs, I'm out. I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you, Rain, for joining me. Rain, say goodbye. Bye-bye.